You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Welcome back to Welcome to AAUW. Uh, before the break, we were talking about AAUW uh, Amador, our local branch, and Suzanne was talking about the scholarship and tech tech programs. And you want to continue with that, Suzanne? Yeah, I had been talking about um, our tech tech scholarships, which, as we mentioned, go to seventh graders. And this year, we were able to fund three seventh graders for that camp. So we're really excited about that. Um, we also award scholarships for uh, young women uh, in our county who are going to be attending community college. And this year, uh, we were able to fund three scholarships for community college attendance at $1,000 a piece. Um, those scholarships are based on financial need, academic achievement, uh, community involvement, involvement in school activities. So we always have a lot of interest in those scholarships from the local high schools and um, we try to award as many as we can. Like I said, this year we awarded three and I think next year we will have the funding for four of those scholarships. Um, I was on the scholarship committee this year and I just have to say it's just a real, uh, it's a real delight to be able to present uh, these monies to these girls who really otherwise would not have the means to to attend school and achieve higher education so um, they're very diverse and uh, this year our recipients uh, one of them has plans to go on to uh, a four-year university and become a, a composer we have another who has aspirations of becoming a veterinarian and another a child psychologist. So um, we're just happy that we can contribute in some way to helping these girls achieve their educational and professional goals. And it's so important in a community like this where there isn't a close college. So those scholarships really mean a lot. They do, yes, absolutely. Um, we also always fund a graduate and or what's called a re-entry scholarship uh, for women who are pursuing an advanced degree or re-entering school after a long period away from their education. Um, this year we were able to award two of those scholarships at $2,000 a piece mm -hmm. and um, I just have to say again that we just really feel privileged to be able to help our local residents pursue their educational goals at all levels from junior high through college and beyond. So, And the reentry one is an interesting one. Could you talk just a little bit more about that in case people don't know exactly what that entails? Uh, well, reentry applicants might be women who uh, maybe started college and had to drop out to work or raise a family or, um, you know, something of that nature, but are at a point in their lives where they'd like to, you know, go back to school and finish that degree or get that degree that they were never able to do before. And so <coughs> it can be very difficult when you're at a point in your life where you are raising a family and a lot of other financial obligations. So so that's really what that scholarship is designed for. Well, I can identify with that one because I was a reentry as well. I Me too. did two years, of, <laughs> two years of college and then left and yeah. got married and had a little sojourn there and finally went back uh, much later to finish my degree and then to go on to get a master's degree, but a scholarship would have been helpful. I didn't have one, but it would have been very but helpful. But I think it's a good incentive if you're thinking about going mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And we highlight them in the fall, don't we, when we have our back to business sort of first mm -hmm. meeting in the fall and uh, welcome new members and uh, it's a wonderful time to come mm -hmm. and hear these young mm -hmm. people, people of all ages actually, talk about their experiences from the scholarships they've Mm -hmm. That's right, and it can really received. make a difference, and we know that from one of our own members actually received one of these scholarships this year um, who had children at a very young age and wasn't able to go to college, and then when she finally was able to get to community college, it changed her life, and now she's a graduate student in public policy at Sac State, and just an amazing success story. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that's our goal and that's what we like to see. Well certainly Home Tour and the scholarship program takes up a lot of our energy uh, during the year but we actually have energy for other things as mm -hmm. well and one of our um, key things is our monthly programs mm -hmm. and uh, we've had some extremely interesting programs maybe we could talk about those. Sure um, 
this is one of the things that we do as a branch as part of our mission to help get education out there to all types of different people in all parts of the community. So throughout the year, um, our branch presents educational programs to the community, and these are always free, and they're always open to the public. So um, anyone can can come and, and you know if they they have an interest in what we're talking mm -hmm. about that particular month uh, and I'm going to give you some examples of what we did this year just to show you the variety of things um, in October we had a public uh, forum presentation by John Plassey on the Amador Community College and uh, that was the the foundation that's now trying to establish a community college here in Amador County and other educational opportunities here in the county and there are some wonderful new opportunities for students here at this time because of this foundation and what they're doing um, in november uh, we had a really interesting uh, program on the uh, tragedy of human trafficking and we had a speaker erica gonzalez uh, immigration Legal Services Program Manager for Opening Doors in Sacramento, which is a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And we learned that human trafficking uh, takes place, you know, we think of it as a third world country problem and that sort of thing, but it takes place in our country and in our region. So that's what this really brought out was how, you know, how this is really close to home. And this Opening Doors was interesting because it's a a program that um, provides a system assistance to people that have been caught up in human trafficking and uh, to you know help these survivors become self-sufficient and you know to move on to a better future I was surprised I attended that program and I was surprised to learn that Sacramento is a major hub yes. for human trafficking I had absolutely no idea major that was hub. The I mean yes that's very scary to yeah. think that that's that close to home and anything that's that close to home is also spreading out. Right. <laughs> it doesn't just stay in that neighborhood. Um, in January, we changed um, a little bit and something not so serious. And we had an evening with uh, Carolyn uh, Tregula. Fregulia. Oh, Fregulia. Okay, author and historian of the Gold Country. And she discussed her books and the uh, history of Amador County. And these are always, we ha try to have one of these author uh, forums every year and they tend to be really well attended people seem to really enjoy these um, the February program was resources for a brighter future and this was emphasizing women helping women especially here in the county and we had uh, presenters from the county and from different agencies um, and the attendees were able to meet and talk to these people and see what you know what they could actually what services would help them so they were able to interact, mm -hmm. and that was really good. Um, in March, this is a... Oh, can a, I, I want to oh, back sure. up, because I think our president just informed us that uh, that particular program received a special award from the California branch. Oh, as, really? Yeah, Outs for Outstanding, outstanding Program, program mm -hmm. for California oh, for this year. Oh, my gosh. So. Well, <laughs> <nice> good for <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, March, which is Women's History Month, is, we do something that's really really great um, we have junior high school students um, share their thoughts through essays and we give them a prompt and this year it was um, write an essay to share with others about women who inspired you and we actually give out cash awards to two first place two second place and two third place students and um, the public is invited to listen to these uh, young students share their essays and uh, so it's really an exciting evening for everyone, the, the students and their parents and their friends and everyone else that attends and, of course, all of our membership that's there. And, and then in April, we co-sponsored co um, with the Amador Partnership a candidates forum for the Board of Supervisors, District 3 and 5. So as you can see, we're kept pretty busy during the year with programs, but it's in order to help educate the community about a lot of these issues. Now, if all of this makes us sound really serious, <laughs> <laughs> it does make us sound kind of serious, you need to know that AEUW also has a lot of social and fun events throughout the year. So, Lonnie, would you like to talk about some well, of those? Well, we have eight special interest groups. The list of spe special interest groups are highlighted and their details appear in our gold filing newsletter each month 
and so uh, depending on which ones you belong to you can find out the details uh, one of the or two of the uh, special interest groups are book groups an afternoon book club that meets once a month in homes and the list of books is a mixture of fiction and nonfiction and the group decides on what it is that they uh, wish to read about then there's an art and action group and this group meets actually twice a month they enjoy drawing and painting and at each other's homes at a ver at a variety and at a variety of outdoor uh, venues they share information about art workshops and galleries and exhibits that they like to go to and lunch is always part of the day uh, the book lovers and page tuners turners are the other book group and it also meets once a month in members homes they discuss the books themes and characters and how it relates to their own lives and worlds and then Bonnie who is Oh, we also have a wonderful what we call fork. cork and fork, which That's is a right. wine tasting group, which is very enjoyable. And we do taste a variety of different wines from all around the world and usually have a theme and we meet every other month and it's quite enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And sometimes besides people's homes, we go to wineries and taste, mm -hmm. taste wine. So let's go uh, take a break just for a moment and okay. we'll come back and continue talking about all the wonderful activities and interest groups we have in AAUW Amador. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.